This message is for that school, that school in your district, that school that eventually is identified in every district. You know that school, that school that, that, that serves that population, that demographic, you know, those kids who live with those families on that side of town. And that side of town has a variety of different names I've experienced. You know, this side of Terra Boulevard, Trailer Park Kids, the Section 8 Homes Kids, Colony West, South Side, Back the Bridge, East Side. I work with a district recently that has three elementary schools in their district and I stopped and asked them about perceptions and it took a few seconds. It was an awkward silence for a while, but then eventually someone piped up and said, school number one over there, that school's, that's generational poverty. School number two, that's working poverty. And school number three, we call that school tablecloths because the kids eat at tables with tablecloths. And so everywhere I go, towns large or small, we identify that school. I've had the honor of working with hundreds of schools and thousands of teachers, teams, and leaders at that school in every corner of the country, every nook and cranny of North America. And by and large, what I find is this, staff there are made up of educators and support professionals that are working hard. They're giving Herculean effort. They're expending tons of energy. They're involved in frenzied activity, but most of the time only yielding marginal results. Those repeated cycles of not getting the results that are commensurate with your effort begins to chip away at the collective efficacy of staff and further embeds the negative perception of the school in the staff's DNA. Having worked with that school all over North America, I've experienced so many stark and amazing differences in those schools. Sometimes there are cultural differences, racial differences, ethnic differences, regional differences, differences in values depending on the community you're serving. But you know what? There, there are two things all of those schools have in common. There's a common language and the DNA is the same. There's a common language that keeps us entangled, embroiled, and trapped in the despair that looks and smells like hopelessness every day. And the language of reinvention, rewiring, redemption, the language of mapping a new destiny, deciding we're gonna be different is the same no matter where we are. And I have those things in common with those schools. Those are my people, man. I speak that language. I share that DNA because I have the honor of serving as the leader of that school in the last district where I serve. And I understand the pain. I understand cycles of hopelessness. I understand working with a staff who has been beaten down like whipped dogs. I understand working with a staff that has just lost all their confidence. And to sleep at night, all we can do, all we have left is to turn and, you know, not with malice in our hearts, but look at the kids we serve. Look at the homes they come from. Look at the parents they have. Look at the families they come from that becomes what gets us through the day. Our path to building a results-oriented culture of learning for all was wrought with challenges. But there was a path, there was a definite path, and it was well-defined. And every single time we had an opportunity to celebrate an improvement, a results-oriented improvement, I stopped and had us reflect on a couple of questions. The first one was, what changed? What changed between then and now that helped to bring about this improvement? And then we start naming, uh, some of the things that we've done in terms of best practice, instructional practice, uh, some of the things we stopped doing. Uh, we, we, we would list some of our collective commitments that we we're really focusing on. And then I get to the second question, which was, what hasn't changed? What hasn't changed at all? And time after time, the answer was the same. Our kids haven't changed. We're the same kids, same parents, same issues. The median income hasn't changed. The stuff they're dealing with outside school hasn't changed but our results are changing. And every time we reflected that way, it just gave us another layer of confidence, another layer of efficacy in our efforts to understand we were the difference. So I'm here to deliver a message to my people, the educators and staff of that school. That you have a choice. Even though what's before you looks daunting, I understand it, but it's still a choice. You have the choice of whether to remain in the current status quo, to align with it, to succumb to it, to submit to it, to decide that this is just the circumstances we were dealt and it's the way things are. Or you have a choice to redefine the culture, to rewire the legacy, to change the perception of your school based on results. So here's your call to action. And you might think because I've mentioned results a couple of times that involves data, but it doesn't. 
In fact, data has no place at this stage of the game, and here's why. For every piece of data I could gather that supported the notion that you have what it takes collectively to rewire your legacy, to redefine the culture at your school, to change the perception and embed in the DNA of your school a culture of learning for all, someone who wants to maintain the status quo could gather just as much data to justify why things are the way they are and should remain the way they are. And so data has no place at this point. In fact, at this point, your only call to action is to make a decision. It's not about data, it's about decision. It's time to decide. About 30 years ago, I had an epiphany that completely changed my life. I have no idea how Webster defines decide, but I'm gonna give you the unfold the soul definition of decide. In this dream, I saw the word in block letters, and then I saw the D and the E separate from the C-I-D-E, D-side. And it prompted me to think about what I believe is a suffix, C-I-D-E. Think about all the words that have that same suffix. Suicide, herbicide, pesticide, all those words connote death. And so in that moment, my epiphany was this. When I decide, when I make an important decision that involves risk-taking and action and ignoring my mood ring and being consistent, things that are gonna make me uncomfortable, but on the other side of that discomfort is significant change, then my new definition to decide is to put all other options to death. To put all other options to death. All you need to decide today is we're going to be better. We are changing the legacy of this school. We are reshaping the perception. We're gonna lean into each other's collective talent and bring forth our greatness, and then in turn, bring forth the greatness of our students. And the beauty of this is you don't have to have the answers. You don't even have to have the next step in place. All those things will be revealed to you once you make the decision. You can't tiptoe it. You can't stick one foot in it. You can't back into this one. You can't tap dance around it. You gotta be all in because something happens when the human being put his or her back against the wall and decides there's no way out but that way. History has shown us that when the human being decides that something must be done, it gets done. And so again, all you need to do today is decide that it's going to be different. And I remember someone asking, at what point do we become an academy? Then, and immediately without thought, I said, when we decide to be. When we decide to be, and we decided that day, to become a learning for all cultures already mapped out. That process is firmly in place, and if you work it, it works. As soon as we decided we were gonna go from that poo putt school with that perception, that school that folks were ashamed to put on social media, that people dropped their heads when someone said you worked at that school, that new teachers left as soon as they got the two years under their belt, we decided we were gonna become a different school. We became that school as soon as we decided because what happened was our next steps were laid before us as a result of the decision. And so decide, put all other options to death.